this is now part three of the series that we've been in this month, and that series is entitled Level Up. Somebody say Level Up. We've been made uncomfortable during this series as God has been challenging our individual status quos. God continues to push all of us as he wants us, his people, to level up. Somebody say level up. God has challenged not only the status quo of his people, but God has cautioned us not to get too comfortable because when you get too comfortable, you get complacent. God has also told us that we are at a time and place now where there are no more excuses. We've been challenged to look at and to change our mindsets. He's challenged us to possess what he already says is ours. How many have started to level up in your life? God has helped us to understand that many of us, we talk faith, but we don't necessarily live faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11:6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. There are some things that we learned about faith that became abundantly clear. Faith isn't just something you talk about. Faith is something you have to be about. That is to say, you got to do more than talk about what you're going to do. You actually have to do what you're talking about. James 2, 17 and 18 put it this way, thus also by itself, if it does not have works, faith is dead. Verse 18 says, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. And then James followed it up in verse 26 of James 2 uh, when he says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. We learned also that God rewards faith. If you show God faith, God will reward that faith. If you show God that you believe and then follow that with actions, God will reward your actions. We learned on last week from the centurion how to have faith for someone else. It's easy to have faith when it's your problem, but how many have faith for somebody else's problem? It's easy to show faith when you have the need, but how many of us show faith when it's to meet somebody else's need? And the centurion also taught us how to put our faith, place our faith in God. He understood the authority of God. He understood the healing power of God. And he sought God, not a doctor, not a pharmacist, not a drug dealer. He sought God for the healing of his servant. The centurion also taught us how to understand and recognize the omnipresence of God. He did not need Jesus to come to his house. He did not need to witness Jesus heal his servant. He just needed Jesus to speak the word that his servant would be healed. And he understood that if Jesus said it, it was already done. How many of you have that kind of faith in your life that all you need to know is that God said it? And as long as God said it, then that's good enough for me. But, but now we're in this part three of Level Up, and we are going to be yet again pushed. We're going to be yet again challenged. Uh, if you need a subtitle, the subtitle for today is Taking Your Trust in God to the Next Level. Yes. Taking Your Trust in God to the Next Level. Now, there are going to be a lot of thought-provoking questions asked today, so be prepared to not answer them verbally, but to answer them introspectively. When you hear these questions asked, it's meant to challenge you and to have you to consider 
what God is asking. Here's the first question that's going to be asked today. Do you trust God? Do you trust God? Now, upon hearing that question, many people will immediately raise their hands. Many people will initially, uh, without hesitation, say yes. Trust is defined, catch this, as assured reliance on the character, ability, strength, or truth of someone or something. Trust is a charge or duty imposed in faith or confidence or as a condition of some relationship. Dictionary.com defines trust this way. It says trust is confident expectation of something. Trust is interchangeable with the word hope. Trust is a person on whom or thing on which one relies. So I ask the question again, do you trust God? Do you have a sure reliance on the character, ability, and strength or truth of God? Do you impose in faith or confidence in God as a condition of your relationship with him? Do you have confidence in God? How many have confidence in God? Do you have an expectation of something from God? Do you put your hope in God? Oh, that's okay. It's going to get a little quiet up in here, but that's all right. Let's go to Genesis now, 22, verse number 1. Genesis 22, verse number 1, because it's from the very onset uh, that this uh, verse is going to test some of our religion. Genesis 22, verse 1 says, Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham. That's right. You saw that correctly. I'll read it again. It says here, now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham. I hate to disappoint some people today, but God will test you. God will test you. You go around saying you love God. God is going to test that love. You go around saying you trust God, God's going to test that trust in him. You go around telling folk you believe in the word of God, God's then going to test that belief in his word. There are a lot of folks that say they are committed to God, and yet God will test that level of commitment in him. The last thing you want to do is go around and talk about how much you trust God, because what you say publicly, God will test privately. I know I ain't talking to myself. I know there's some people out here right now that know they have been tested by God. And you know that you can say, I have been through some stuff with God. And I've been through some stuff for God. How many can say you've been tested by God? How many in here right now can say without a shadow of a doubt, you've been under examination by God? If God was the teacher and you were the student, you know you've been into some stuff with God and for God. God has been walking by your desk of life watching you take the test that he's administered and he wants to see are you going to pass I feel like somebody's passing up in here already you got to know that God was going to test you and he's going to test you in many ways God will test you emotionally God will allow some folks in your life that will push you to the edge of your emotions don't push me because I'm close to the edge I'm trying not to lose my head because God will allow some folks in your life that will push you to the point where you're about to go off, but yet he wants to see are you mature enough to hold your emotions in check. God will test you not only emotionally, but God will test you physically. God will allow some stuff to go on in your body. He'll allow some stuff to go on in your head. He'll allow some stuff to go on with you physically because he wants to see, do you trust him while you're still in pain? Can you still give him praise when you're hurting? Can you still give him glory even though you don't feel good right now? See, there's too many feel-good Christians that the only time they can praise God is when they feel all right. But God is looking for some folks that can praise them when they don't feel good. God's looking for some folks that can give them praise when everything ain't all right in their life. 
God will test you emotionally. He'll test you physically. He will test you spiritually. God will allow stuff to go on in your life to test your resolve and your spiritual resolve in him. He wants to know, can you still look in your Bibles when, when the answer ain't there yet? He wants to know, can you still pray when you ain't getting no answers? He wants to know, can you still uh, be excited about him when everything ain't exciting going on in your life? God will test you. I don't know about you, but I, I appreciate the test, but I don't like taking the test. Can I get real up in here? I, I appreciate what I learned from the test, but I don't necessarily want to go through the test. So, so, so faith, faith is tested. Love is tested because you can't say you love God and that love not be tested. You can't say you got faith without God testing that faith. So watch this. It says, now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. I'm about to shout for everybody up in here because there are many of us that are like Abraham right now. You've been tested. You've been tried. You've been lied on. You've been pushed to your limits, and God will still call your name. And you crazy enough to raise your hand and say, God, here I am. Some of us have been to hell and back, and yet God was the one that sent you down there. And then when God calls your name again, you crazy enough to say, God, I'm here. Here I am. Some of us have praised God. We worship God, and then all hell breaks loose in our life. And then when God calls your name, you still want to get up and say, God, if you want to use me, use me. I know there's about 10 or 20 of us in here right now and on Facebook Live to say, I know I've gone through hell. I've been lied on. I've been cheated on. I've been taken advantage of. And yet every time God calls my name, I still say, God, here I am. Who are the crazy ones in here that keep raising your hand every time God says, calls your name out? Who are the ones that God can count on through thick and thin, when it's hard, when it's not hard? Who is in here that can say, God, no matter what goes on in my life, you can depend on me. He says, here I am. That's what Abraham says. <laughs> I'm going to volunteer when nobody else volunteers. I'm going to do it if nobody else is willing to do it. I I'm going to stay on the battlefield if nobody else stays on the battlefield. He says, here I am. And then look at verse 2. Look at verse 2. Uh, then he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Here it is that we see God testing Abraham's trust. Watch this now. God tells Abraham Take now your son, your only son, Isaac, which begs the question, do you trust God enough to put what he promised you in the care of his hands? God has promised some of you a spouse, and, and God wants to know, will you put your spouse in my hands, even though I promised it to you? God has promised some of you a business, and you started the business, but God wants to know, will you put your trust in me to handle the affairs of that business. I promise you, God, God will promise some of you good health. And then you trust God for that good health. But then God wants to know, will you put that trust in my hands? Will you let me handle your health? Will you put your health in my hands and trust that I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do for you? Abraham took his only son because God asked him. Now, you understand now, Abraham waited 25 years for Isaac. Abraham, take your son, the one that's going to have the generational blessings flow through. Abraham, bring me your son, the one you waited to have for more than 25 years. And I know that's speaking to somebody right now. God has promised you something, and by the time you get it in your hands, God wants to know, can you give it back to me? Do you trust me enough to let me have what I just gave you? Here he says, Abraham, take now your son, your only son. Then he adds something extra on it. Whom you love. It's here that God is now testing the limits of Abraham's love. Which begs another question, do you love what God has promised you more than God himself? 
Do you love what God has blessed you with more than the one who is the blesser? The reason why some of us can't be blessed beyond what we already have is God already knows you'll start worshiping the blessing and not the blesser. God says, I can't give some of you more because you'll spend more time in the house you asked for than in my house. I can't give some of you more because you'll then begin to make that thing a little God in your life instead of worshiping the true one and living God out of heaven. God says, the reason why I asked Abraham to give up his son is because I know he loves his son. Take now, Abraham, your son, your only son whom you love. Which we got to ask this next question. Do you trust God with what you love? (laughs) This is now where you got to take your your faith level, your trust level in God to a whole different level now. Too many say they trust God, but they pull the rug of that trust from underneath it because now God is asking me to give up something that I truly love. Too many say they trust God, but yet when God says give up something that you love, we don't want to do it. God says now I'm at a place now where I'm going to test my people and I'm going to test their trust in me. And I want to know, do you just trust me out of your mouth or do you trust me with your actions? Abraham, I'm going to test your trust in me. Abraham, I'm going to see just how much you believe in me. Abraham, God says, I want you to offer up an offering, but I don't just want any offering. No, I want your very best. Abraham, catch this, he says, take now your son, your only son whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you, but look at verse number three, because (laughs) verse one said God was going to test him. Verse verse two, we see now God presents the test to Abraham, but let's see how Abraham responds to the test. Look at verse three. Verse three says, so Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him. And Isaac, his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. We're going to see right here in verse 3, Abraham does three things to prove he's got next level trust in God. Here's the first thing that we see here. Abraham, Abraham does not question God. Too often, too many of God's people, we question what God wants us to do. God tells you to go someplace and you don't want to go. Why well, I got to go over there? Why can't I go over here? Too many of us, when God says do something, we want to know why we got to do it. And too many of us have too many questions. But we see here that Abraham never questions God. He never asks God why. He never asks God why Isaac. He never asks God why now, God. We don't see Abraham questioning the judgment of God. And the, maybe the reason why you aren't moving yet is because you got too many questions. And too many questions and not enough actions. Here's the second thing Abraham does. Abraham, <laughs> I like this, Abraham rises early in the morning to obey God. <laughs> the, the verse says that in, in this verse it says, so Abraham rose early in the morning. You know, some of us, we would have slept in on that day. (laughs) Some of us wouldn't have got up to about 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the afternoon because we knew we have to do something that God wanted us to do that we didn't necessarily want to do. But we see here, Abraham gets up early in the morning. This means, this shows us that Abraham does not delay. He does not hesitate. And for many, delayed obedience is the same as disobedience. But if you want to go to the next level, you got to get up early sometimes. If you want to go to the next level in God, you've got to do some next level sacrificing. So Abraham got up early in the morning. But here's the third thing that proves Abraham had next level trust in God. It, it says here, Abraham gathers all that he needed to do what God told him to do. He gets up early in the morning, watch this, saddles his donkey, and took 
two young men with him and Isaac his son. But don't miss this part right here. And he split the wood for the burnt offering. Don't miss that. And Abraham split the wood for the burnt offering. Why is that important? Why do we got to keep bringing that up? He split the wood because sometimes you got to show God that you trust him by doing it yourself. So many folk won't help. And, and how many folk won't help me? And who can I call to help me with this? And how many can I get to help me with that? No, no. Sometimes you got to show God that you trust him by doing it yourself. You got to prove to God, God, I trust you. So I'm going to show you my trust by standing up and doing what I have to do to prove to you that I love you. Well, verse 3 concludes, verse 3 concludes with saying, and went to the place of which God had told him. Here's the fourth thing Abraham does. Abraham goes where God tells him to go. Abraham goes where God tells him to go, which begs the question, do you trust God enough to go where he told you to go? Are you one of those that got to know where you're going before you get there? Are you one of those people you got to have directions before you even get in the car? Do you, are you one of those that's got to, got to have some sense of where you're going before you even move for God? But jump now to verse 5. Jump now to verse 5. Verse 5 says, And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship. I'm going to read that again. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship. I'm going to read that one more time for the real worshipers. And Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship. Uh, this is next level trust right here. A Abraham says to these young men, stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship. You got to understand the real worshipers ought to be celebrating right now because Abraham says, I'm about to sacrifice the thing I love. And before I do it, I'm I'm going to go worship God. Good God Almighty. Abraham says, I'm about to do something that's going to be very hard for me, but before I do it, I'm going to get down on my knees and worship God. Yeah, y'all understand why that's next level worship. Because he says, God, you are the one that's telling me to make this sacrifice, but I'm still going to worship you in spite of what you're asking me to do. Who in here has that kind of level of worship with God that although God is asking you to do something hard, you still still are going to get down and give God the worship. I dare you to get on your feet and start worshiping him right now. Some of us can't worship God when a bill can't get paid. Some of us can't even worship God when we get a flat tire. Some of us can't worship God when the cable get cut off. But there's got to be about 30 of us in here that says no matter what, I'm going to worship my God. Oh. oh. Abram says to these men, Y'all stay here. I'm going to take the sacrifice, and we are going to go worship. Y'all stay here, because y'all can't go where we're going. <laughs> y'all stay here, because y'all just might ask why y'all worshiping when you're about to do something you don't want to do. Y'all stay here. I've got to have a moment of worship with God because what he's asked me to do is going to be hard, but I won't let it stop my worship. And how many of us have let something stop our worship? You get some bad news at work, and you can't lift up a finger to praise God. Your brother or sister call you and say something you don't like. And you can't lift up your hands and give God a praise. Abraham is told by God, I need you to sacrifice the thing you love. And Abraham can still worship him. That's next level trust in God right there. But catch something that he says here. Catch something he says to them. Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go... Yonder and worship. And we will come back to you. Yes, and we will come back to you. Listen to Abraham's language. We're going to go worship. 
But when the worship is over, we will come back to you. We're going to go worship. But when the worship is over, there's not we might come back to you. There's not we, there's a possibility we'll come back to you. No, Abraham says, when we get done worshiping, we will come back to you. Somebody's got to have that kind of faith in God that no matter what I'm going through, God will work it out for me. No matter what I'm dealing with, God still is going to be my solution. But, but, but not only did he say we will, but there's another word we ought to get excited about. He says, we. Wait a minute now. He's supposed to go sacrifice his son. How can he say we will return back to you? He must have some kind of faith in God that no matter what I do to my son, God's got the power to bring him back to life if he wants to. He says, when the worship is over, when the sacrifice is made, we will come back to you. God says, I need to get some folks with some next level trust that no matter what I'm going through, I am going to make it. No matter what I'm dealing with, I am going to come through. No matter how bad it looks right now, I will come out of this thing looking like silver and gold. Somebody shout, I will make it happen. Oh, so, 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 he says to them, we will come back to you, Whew. which I got to ask a question to somebody, because you've been down about some things, you've been struggling in some things, and God wants me to ask this question, has God ever let you down? Whether you've lived a short life or a long life, has God ever not come through for you? Have you ever been in a place where you can say God did not do what he said he was going to do? There's not a person in here that can say that. But look at what happens in verse 6. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering. And he laid it on Isaac, his son. Ain't that a trip? <laughs> he makes his son carry the wood that he's going to use to burn his son. Good God almighty. <laughs> and then it says, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And the two of them went together. Verse 7. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, my father... And he said, here I am, my son. Then he said, look, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? It's here where God says we all need to be careful. <laughs> when I saw this, uh, uh, Dr. Bradshaw, I saw it in a different light. I, I've, I've seen this story. I've preached this story multiple times. But I saw it in a different light this time because... <laughs> Here Abraham is unwavering in his trust in God. Here, here Abraham is. He, he's gone where God told him to go. He's, he's about to do what God tells him to do. Here Abraham is. He's strong, standing firm on what God said. But there's a problem that we see here that we got to be careful with. When his son starts asking questions, that's when the problems start. See, I'm good as long as I'm asking God personally one-on-one. -on -one. I'm cool as long as it's just me and God privately in my closet. I'm okay as long as I'm having my moment with God in my car by myself. But when somebody I love starts asking questions, now I might struggle a little bit. I'm okay when I'm talking to God, but now somebody's asking me, what are we going to do because they don't see how God going to do it. He says here, <laughs> Daddy, I see all this wood. <laughs> I even see a fire. I even see where you might build the altar. My problem, Daddy, is, is I don't see the offering. <laughs> but you got to see how Abraham responds to his son. Watch this in verse 8. 
And Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. Oh, that's, that's, that's some serious trust right there. That, that's some serious belief in God right there. He answers his son, my son, God will provide. That's somebody's word right there. My son, God will provide. My daughter, God will provide. No matter what it is, God will provide. It may not look like it right now, but God will provide. I know you're hurting right now, but God will provide. I know it's hard right now, but God will provide. I know it don't look good right now, but God will provide. I know you're hurting right now, but God will provide. I know you got questions, but God will provide. Oh. And sometimes that's what we got to do in the face of trouble. You got to declare your trust in God. In the face of hardship, instead of crying, woe is me, you got to declare God will provide. <laughs> Wait a minute now. Abraham never says he know how God going to do it. Abraham never says, God going to do it this way. God, no, no. He just said, God will provide. Yes, yes. That's the kind of trust God is looking from us. Yes. But look at verse 9. Look at verse 9. Then they came to the place of which God had told them. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son. And laid him on the altar upon the wood. I know probably what's going through Abraham's mind. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what's going on in Isaac's mind. <laughs> so, 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 so Abraham, catch this now, don't miss this. He built the altar. Abraham places the wood. Abraham binds his son. Abraham lays his son on the altar. Which tells us when you really trust God, sometimes you got to do it yourself. But then look at verse 10. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Which begs the question, are you willing to do the hard thing to show you trust God. God knows you don't want to do it. But are you willing to show him you're willing to do it? Abraham is about to sacrifice what he waited 25 years to have. He's about to offer up the thing he longed for from age 75 to 100. He's about to give up the one thing that God promised him he could have. And look at verse 11. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. And look at verse 12. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, which begs another question. What will you have to do to prove to God that you trust him? What is God waiting to see you do to prove to him that you trust in what he can do for you? Look at what the angel said from heaven. I know that you fear God. Since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And as excited, Lisa, as I was to hear God say that to Abraham, it also serves as an indictment on the church. Because for some, we are withholding from God. There's some in God's church, you're still holding on to something that God wants you to let go and let him have. 
God says, for some of you, you are holding back on me. And God says, I can't truly release the blessings I want to release on your life because you are withholding something that you deem more important than me. And so we see here in verse 13. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Now, uh, typically, Deacon S. Rogers, uh, many preachers will end the story right there. Most times, uh, Merlene, uh, the minister, the woman of God, the man of God, they'll put the exclamation point at the point of the ram in the bush. Oftentimes, Lady Val, they don't even preach Abraham sacrificing the ram on the altar in place of his son Isaac. Uh, but we've got to see something else in this text today, which is why you've got to take your trust in God to the next level. Go with me to verse 16 because we know the ram in the bush. We know that now Abraham takes that ram and sacrifices it in place of his son Isaac. But catch what is said in verse 16. God is speaking to Abraham. And look at what he says here. By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. Look at verse 17. It's going to bless you. Blessing will I bless you. Good God Almighty. And multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. Look at 18. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. God wants to speak to somebody today. If you level up your trust in God, he's going to level up the blessings he's got for you. If you level up your trust in God, God says, I got a generational blessing with your name on it. If you level up your trust in God, God says, I'm going to do for you what the enemy can't stop. God says, if you show me that you trust me on a different level, God says, I'm going to show you I can bless you on a different level. Somebody say level up. Level up. Somebody say level up. level up. Don't just trust God anymore. Take that trust to the next level. Don't just believe God anymore. Believe God on a level that you've never believed before in your life. Sacrifice in ways you've never sacrificed before. Be willing to do the hard thing for God. And watch God do the miraculous thing for you. <laughs> I'm done, I'm done. But <laughs> I've always been of the belief that that ram that was in the bush was there the whole time. But Abraham was so focused on obeying God that he didn't see it until God stopped him from what he was about to do. And I submit to somebody in here today, he's got your ram in that bush. You just can't see it yet. <laughs> He just wants to see, can you get your trust level to a place where you've never had it before? And when you look up, you're going to see, look at God provide. And God said, I had the provision there the whole time. I just needed to know, could you take your trust to another level? I needed to know, could you go higher in your trust in me? And now you're going to see, I'm going to make a way out of no way. Somebody say, level up. Somebody say, level up your trust in God. Give God some praise up in this place.